Greetings everybody, uh, John here, walking you through one of the toughest areas covered in series 7, which scares the majority of us who have studied and sat for the series 7, or who are still studying for series 7, which is options. I hope this session familiarize you with options and make a very hard subject easy for you to understand and score very well during your Series 7 exam. When we talk about options, remember that options are contracts. Whenever we have a contract, we have a buyer and we have a seller. Think about any business transaction you do. For a business transaction, we have someone who's willing to buy and someone who's willing to sell something. And both parties come together and they have a transaction. They have a contract between them. And this is exactly what options do. But whenever we have a business transaction, what do we have? We have gainers and we have losers at the same time. A very important question that many times come in series 7 exam they ask you do options have to be exercisable and the answer is not always remember when you go into a business contract what is your ultimate objection obje, obje, objective your ultimate objective is to gain right you are interested in profit from trading contracts and this is the reason why maybe it is not in your best interest to exercise. So if you have that right, maybe you will not exercise your option right. Unless you have an obligation, as we will see later. Then in this case, you are obligated to buy or to sell at specific price. And there might be some loss consequences. But again, if you have the right, you do not have to exercise the option, remember that, as it is not necessary. If you want to hold a Tesla car at the dealer that is going to be produced in six months, what do you do? You pay a deposit, right? You pay a deposit. Same thing in options. What do we do? We pay a premium. So in options, we pay a premium. In all your finance studies, you have studied that there is a time value of money. And that's true. The dollar you pay today is not the same value like the dollar you will pay tomorrow. Why? Because of course there are inflation factors. So that premium you pay has two factors factored in it the intrinsic value and the time value of money. Time value is very important in finance. And this is the reason as we are moving closer to the expiration date, the time value of money keeps diminishing. And that makes sense, right? Why? Because as you are, if you are buying something six months in advance, there are too many uncertainties that you don't know. So time value has a bigger value than if you buy something, let's say, two days before it comes available in the market. Why? Because there is less and less uncertainty. So remember, so premium has an intrinsic value and has a time value. And as we move closer, as we move closer, to the closing or to the expiration of the contract or the option contract, the premium is made up entirely of intrinsic value and the time value of money diminishes in this case. In that exam, you might see the word buy and sell. Remember, this is exactly what options are. They are buyers and sellers. So the true two transactions are buy and sell. But also, they can notate buy as long and hold. 
So if you see in the exam, he hold stock so and so or shares so and so at X price. Okay, then you know the mean hold is the same as long, is the same as buy. Similarly, if you read the word sell, it is the same as short and it is the same as right. So if they tell you you're right so and so, you know it means sold. If you short so and so, you know it means sold. If you hold so and so, you know it means bought. If you long so and so, you know it means bought. And those are very important terms because sometimes the exam might not tell you buy and sell. They might use these terms like long, hold, or short, right? So you need to understand what do they mean. And this is very important. A very quick point here. When you buy something, you pay a premium, right? If you go to the dealer to reserve a Tesla car, you pay a deposit. So remember that. What do you do? You pay a deposit. You pay a premium, right? If you sell something, you are receiving a premium. When you give Elon Musk your money to buy one of his Teslas, what do you do? He has an obligation, right? At a point of time to deliver a Tesla for you. And the reason is he received a premium for it, right? So this is his contract with you. Maybe he agreed with you to sell you his Tesla at $60,000. There are lots of uncertainties in the market. Remember that there are lots, lots of uncertainties in the market, right? Meaning maybe materials, right, will become more expensive. Maybe labor shortage will cause an increase in labor cost, right? Too many factors that can kick in. Maybe a new government regulations in the safety of the cars will cause, you know, uh, a more advanced safety system to be installed. However, remember what happened? They received, Tesla received a premium from you, received a deposit from you, and they promised you that within six months, they will deliver a Tesla model so and so to you. So what do they have? They have an obligation. So I hope this quick introduction was very helpful to you. Uh, to make it helpful in understanding what contracts or what options are all about. And uh, I am very happy to assist you uh, with your uh, Series 7 options, municipalities, and uh, suitability uh, for your Series 7. Uh, contact me to start your first tutoring session. I'll be more than happy uh, to guide you and uh, explain the concepts in more details as we go through the material. Thank you and good luck with your options and your Series 7 studies and uh, best of luck with your uh, new career choice. Thank you.